Now I am going to start the immunology series where I will be discussing all about the immunity immune system which is required at the undergraduate level. We all know that we all are surrounded by so many of microorganisms around us but we are not getting all the infections thanks to the immunity which we all have that is protecting us from all those deadly microorganisms. So let's read about that immunity in detail in this video plus the upcoming videos. So first question arises what is the immunity? So immunity refers to the resistance that is offered by the host against the microorganisms or any other substance. Okay, so what is the immunity? It is the resistance. It is the resistance which is offered by the host against the microorganisms. Okay, this is the simple uh, definition of the immunity. Now, there are two types of immunity. One is the innate immunity and the other one is the acquired immunity. What is the uh, rough definition of these two? So, innate immunity means the immunity which is present by birth. Okay, and the acquired immunity means the immunity which is acquired during the course of the life by the experience of the immune system of that host okay so the experience uh, that the immune system of that particular host that uh, gains over time during the course of the life of the host that experience builds the acquired immunity okay now that acquired immunity is further classified into the active immunity and the passive immunity we will read in detail the acquired immunity but first let's read the innate immunity so the uh, here the first thing that arises is what is the innate immunity what is the proper definition of the innate immunity so the proper definition is that the innate re immunity refers to the non specific inborn defense mechanism mark all the words properly that it is the non specific inborn defense mechanism inborn defense mechanism of the body that comes into play immediately after the body comes in contact of any microorganism or any substance that means whenever any microorganism comes into the contact for the first time to the body the first immune response that comes into play is nothing but our innate immunity okay so immediately after the contact of the microorganism uh, with the body the non-specific and the inborn defense mechanism that comes into play is the innate immunity. Now what are some salient features of the innate immunity? So the salient features of the innate immunity are like it is faster and inborn. So it is inborn as we see as, as we saw in the definition also it is inborn and it is faster. Okay, it doesn't uh, it does not uh, need time to uh, act upon the uh, microorganism. It, it is faster so the second uh, salient feature is that it provides the first line of defense against the infection it provides the first line of defense okay then the third uh, feature is that it does not require any prior contact with the pathogen or the antigen we when we will be reading the acquired immunity then we will see that acquired immunity requires a prior contact with the microorganisms then only the acquired immunity can play its role otherwise not but uh, that is not the case with the innate immunity it does not require any prior contact it comes into play whenever the pathogen comes in contact of the body plus it is non-specific okay the innate immunity is non-specific so it is not uh, against a particular microorganism it acts against all, all of the microorganisms it does not discriminate between the type of microorganism okay so the innate immunity is non-specific now what are the components of the innate immunity so if you see here the components of the innate immunity are the anatomical barriers that our body have then the physiological barrier that our bodies have then the cells in the in our body the cells in our blood then the complement proteins and the inflammatory barriers that we all have so these are all the four uh, uh, barriers that we all have which makes our innate immunity so let's see all of them one by one whenever someone asks to write a short note over the innate immunity then you have to write first the definition then the salient features and then you have to mention about all of these components of the innate immunity that will fetch you a good marks okay so let's read the 
uh, barriers of the innate immunity one by one. So first of all, we'll be talking about the anatomical barrier. Like what is the anatomical barrier? Anatomical means something related to anatomy. So like our skin, skin is the outer covering of our body. Na? So we, uh, it is quite uh, obvious that it will be uh, preventing the entry of all the pathogens from outside into inside our body. Okay. So thus it prevents the entry of the microbes. So it is an anatomical barrier. It becomes a component of the innate immunity. Plus it also has the intraepithelial lymphocytes which can kill those uh, you know the pathogens which somehow get entered through the skin so those will be killed by the intraepithelial lymphocytes so these two things of the skin is protecting okay and acting as the innate immunity as a component of the innate immunity plus the mucous membrane we know our gut is lined by mu mucous membrane so that mucous membrane also prevents the entry whenever we eat something multiple amount of uh, bacteria also enters along with our food but that do not cause the infections because we have the mucous membrane covering our uh, gut lumen okay so that mucous membrane prevents the entry of the uh, foreign microorganisms which are uh, engulfed with the food or anything that we eat and prevent the entry of those uh, microorganisms to the body so see here the mucus that is present there in the mucous membrane that entraps the foreign substances plus also we have cilia in the respiratory mucosa okay that cilia in the respiratory mucosa propels the foreign substance out of the body the microorganisms are propelled out of the body so these these are two ways by which the mucous membrane is also acting as a component of our innate immunity also functioning as uh, as a part of our innate immunity that is the mucous membrane which is uh, helping in, in uh, entrapping the foreign substance or uh, entrapping the uh, microorganism and then the cilia which is propelling the uh, microorganism out of the body through ciliary movements okay so this is how the anatomical barrier acts as a part of the innate immunity then we comes come to the physiological barriers so physiological barriers are like temperature how 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 does temperature help in uh, you know preventing the infections so we know that whenever there is uh, greater temperature then at high temperatures the microorganisms could not grow so whenever there occurs fever that is a physiological response to the infection okay so when uh, the fever occurs that prevents the growth of the microorganisms okay so that is a protective mechanism uh, that our body has against any uh, infections that we get okay so it retards the micro micro uh, growth plus low ph so low gastric ph that we all have in our stomach that kills all of those microorganisms which are uh, taken along with the food then the secretory products the secret secretions like uh, saliva the tears and the trypsin enzyme from the pancreas so these all secretions uh, damages the cell wall of the microbes okay so saliva protects the uh, i mean saliva protects from those microorganisms which are entering uh, along with the food plus tear is protecting our eyes then trypsin is again uh, uh, damaging the cell wall of the microbes which are uh, taken along with the food so this is how the physiological barriers also act as a part of our innate immunity and prevents the uh, infection Next comes the cellular component of the innate immunity. Now the cellular component of the innate immunity comprises of the phagocytes. What are the phagocytes? Phagocytes are the neutrophils, monocytes and the macrophages which engulf the pathogens. So uh, when these uh, neutrophils, monocytes, macrophages come, come in contact of the foreign substances which somehow get entry into the, our body, foreign substances or for that matter any microorganisms which somehow get entry in our body then these uh, phagocytes cause the endocytosis of those microorganisms okay and those microorganisms are endocytosed in all of these phagocytes and then killed with the help of the lysosome which is a cellular organelle okay which is a cellular organelle so this is how the phagocytes also act as the cellular barrier of the innate immunity then the nk cells the natural killer cells these natural killer cells uh, are, are a type of the lymphocytes okay and they 
kill the virus infected cells plus the tumor cells okay so that is the importance of the natural killer cells then the dendritic cells dendritic cells are nothing but the ant antigen presenting cells okay they help in presentation of the antigens to the t lymphocytes so that the cellular immunity plus the humoral immunity can be activated so the cellular and the humoral immunity is dependent upon the antigen presentation we will read all of that in our future lectures so the dendritic cell is a type of antigen presenting cells present in our skin then the mast cells the mast cells release various type of substances like the histamine prostaglandins leukotrienes cytokines these all are released by mast cells so what does these do, all do these uh, help in vasodilation help in uh, you know activation of the complement system they help in uh, attraction of the lymphocytes to the site of infection and thereby killing of the microorganisms so there are various mechanism by which these secretions also help in the preventing the infection then we have the complement activation and the inflammatory response so the complement uh, system we will read in our future lectures but for the time being just know that the complement activation leads to the lysis of the microbes plus it also initiates the inflammatory response and whenever there is inflammatory response there will be large number of neutrophils coming and the large number of lymphocytes coming to the site of infection and thereby sterilizing the area that is killing the microorganism which is present at the site of infection so in this way the complement activation also act as a part of the innate immunity then we all have the inflammatory response the inflammatory response leads to vasodilation you all must have read in the pathology that the inflammatory response is associated with the vasodilation locally plus there is increased vascular permeability locally and plus there is recruitment of the phagocytes and we all know that the phagocytes whenever come they will engulf the uh, pathogen and kill them thereby act as the part of the innate immunity then we all have the cytokines uh, several types of cells like helper t cells macrophages mast cell they all uh, secrete different types of cytokines like uh, tnf factor the interleukin 1 2 3 4 5 6 there are several types of cytokines okay which are produced and they help in the inflammation plus uh, attraction of the uh, lymphocytes and the neutrophils to the site and thereby killing of the infection the killing of the microorganism which are causing the infection okay so the cytokines also act as the part of the innate immunity then we have the acute phase reactants the acute phase reactants are some of the substances or the proteins which are uh, increased in our body at the time of infection they may be uh, positive acute phase reactant or negative acute phase reactant what does that mean the positive acute phase reactant means the acute phase reactant which increases in amount at the time of infection okay the examples are like crp complement protein serum amyloid a haptoglobulin then ceruloplasmin fibrinogen is also a fibrinogen is, is also a positive acute phase reactant okay fibrinogen is also a positive phase reactant then comes the negative phase reactant what are negative phase reactant those uh, ac acute phase reactants which decrease in serum uh, uh, amount at the time of infection those are like albumin the transferrin the antithrombin please remember these three okay they may ask a mcq like all of them are uh, negative phase uh, ne negative acute phase reactants except so they will give you all three plus any one of them so in that case you you should know how to exclude the options and how to mark the correct answer okay so please remember the negative acute phase reactants and the positive acute phase reactants so this is all the uh, acute uh, all about the components of the innate immunity whenever someone asks you to write a short note then please start with the definition and uh, write the salient features of the immune uh, innate immunity then the components of the innate immunity and describe in few words about all the components of the innate immunity that will fetch you a good mark okay next we will read about the acquired immunity